Hey everybody, welcome to our Sunday night service at Faith Family Church of God, 3808 Old Brendan Road, Pearl, Mississippi, 39208. We're so glad to have you here with us this evening. If you haven't already done so, please like and comment to let us know that you're here. And since we are going um, on multiple platforms, Facebook and YouTube, if you're on YouTube and you've not already done so, click the subscribe button and then click that bell as well to get notifications on when we go live and when we post content. You don't want to miss out. We always have something going and always have great things at Faith Family Church of God. Before we have our word tonight for Sunday night service, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord God, for this day. We magnify you, Lord God, and praise you for everything that you have done for us, God, what you have brought us from, where you have brought us to, and where you were taking us to, Lord God, in the future, Lord God, because you have perfect plans and a purpose for us, Lord God. We thank you for that. Thank you for the awesome services that we've been having, Lord, in our church, Lord, each and every Sunday. We just thank you, Lord, for the time to be able to come together, Lord God, in person on Sundays and together, Lord God, online throughout the rest of the week, Lord God, because wherever you are, Lord God, we can be there in spirit together as well, Lord God, as we gather together in your name. So we thank you for that, God. You know the needs of each and every person watching this right now, Lord, whether they are spiritual uplifting, Lord God, or physical healing, whether from cancer or from COVID, from the common cold or pneumonia, Lord God, whatever the case is, Lord God, physical healing in Jesus' name, financial blessings, Lord God, uh, blessings in homes and marriages, families and on jobs and in school situations. Lord, whatever the need is, you know the need. We lift it up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, God. And we trust and believe together that each need be met according to your will and for your glory, God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask together, Lord, that you would anoint me as your servant tonight, Lord God, as your speaker, Lord God, your mouthpiece to bring the word that you have for us tonight. Let your will be done, Lord God, and your word be spoken. Open our hearts and our minds and our souls and our ears to receive your word, Lord God, that it would draw us closer to you, Lord God, that it would make us stronger in you, more passionate, Lord God, about our relationship and our walk with you, Lord God. And we ask all these things in Jesus' holy and mighty and precious name. And everybody says, Amen. So if you've been watching the last few Sunday nights, you know that we've been on the series of the book of James. Sister Brenda and I have been discussing James with you, and we are now on James chapter 3. Last week, we talked about putting our faith into action. And to continue our study on the book of James, like I said, we're going to pick up with James chapter 3. And this chapter is most famous for the Bible speaking words of wisdom on the tongue and on our speech. So with that being said, let's jump right in. James chapter 3 and verse 1. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. James starts this chapter off with a warning, a warning that he offers to others as well as to himself. He says that teachers will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be judged more strictly than others will. Why is that? The influence that those in the authority of a teaching position have over others brings a greater responsibility. Everybody knows what I'm quoting from when I say with great power comes great responsibility. That is true even in this case. When you're a teacher or a preacher or called of God to do something and you step into that position, you are held to a greater accountability, a greater responsibility over others. And that is because, again, we have been charged by God to do His work and to deliver his word to his people. People rely on those who teach and preach the word to deliver the word of God to them. Remember that if the blind leads the blind, they both fall into the ditch. When a teacher or a preacher says something under the umbrella of the name of God, they are acting as God's mouthpiece to the people around them. That is why teachers and preachers must preach nothing but the truth of the word of God. Anything else other than the truth of the word is like you're putting words into God's mouth, words he didn't say. And when something is said from the pulpit or from the podium or from the webcam in the name of God, it carries weight. Also, teachers and preachers are held to a higher accountability for what we teach and preach because there are some who may never open the Bible and study it for themselves. 
whether they have one and simply just choose not to open it, or whether they cannot read, or if they cannot afford to buy a copy of the Word of God. For those who don't read the Word of God for whatever reason, they, the taught or preached Word may be the only Word of God that they receive into their lives. So if anything other than the truth of the Word of God is brought before them, then how are they to know what is truth and what is opinion or false? And then their soul hangs in the balance because of this, and whoever steers them wrong by preaching the wrong word is held to that higher accountability. That is why teachers and preachers are held to a higher accountability. James chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. It says, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so... The tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. So let's break this down. In verse chapter 2, I mean verse 2, James points out that none of us are perfect and that we all stumble in many things because we are human and we are imperfect. When James says here, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. When he says perfect here, he's meaning that person is very mature and has a lot of self-control and is very disciplined in thought, word, and action. And as we see here uh, in just a few moments, as we read further, we see here that it says the tongue is a little member at most great things. The tongue is one of the most powerful members in the body. And if somebody can tame that tongue and keep from speaking something wrong, then they are very disciplined and very, very mature. And in verses 3 through 5, we see vivid imagery brought forth by James concerning the tongue in our speech. James points out, that even though it takes discipline, we can put bits in horses' mouths and with just a little bit of time, we can train them to obey which way we tell them to go by pulling on the bit, leading them in that way. In verse 4, James points out that something so large as a ship, even though it may be tossed by the waves and feel the pressure of high winds at times, something so small as the rudder on the very edge of the bottom of the ship can be used by the captain to control which way the ship will go and how fast it can go. So if the tongue is like a bit in the mouth of a horse, or like the rudder on a ship, it leaves us with this question. Who then holds the reins, or who or what directs the rudder? Some people have no hand on the reins or no hand on the rudder and therefore say whatever comes into their mind. Others direct their tongue from their emotions or from the aspects of their carnal or fleshly nature. In other words, that they just speak their mind, um, they, they, whatever they feel in the moment, whether it's happiness or sadness or anger, um, just whatever their flesh feels, they speak it. James points us towards having the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, working through the new man because when we are saved by the blood of Jesus, truly give our hearts to God, we become as a new person, a new creation. And when the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, is working within us, then we have to let Him set His guiding hands on the reins and on the rudder that is our tongue. In verse 5, James begins to tell us that even though the tongue is one of the smallest members of the body, it is one of the most powerful members of our body and can be used for either good or evil intentions. And then he goes into just how deadly the fire, deadly the tongue can be by ending verse 5 saying, See how great a forest a little fire kindles. 
Here he is saying that the tongue, if not careful, can be used to tear down somebody or something so fast. And once that something is said and done, the damage is already done and requires a lot of work to stop that damage from going any further and from doing any more harm. And once the damage is done, then there, it takes a lot of time to begin to try and even repair that damage. So we must watch our tongue. And that is the title of tonight's lesson, sermon, Watch Your Tongue. And in verses 6 through 8, we see it says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. So verse 6 compares the tongue to a fire. Fire consumes something entirely. And it either destroys or purifies. Think about it. If you set fire to grass or to something paper-like, then it will consume it and obliterate it completely. But if you take a piece of pottery, piece of clay, and you put it in a kiln where it fires up to thousands of degrees, it purifies and solidifies that clay together, making a beautiful piece of art. Here, James is describing the fleshly nature of the tongue because before we truly come to know God and before we draw closer to God and go deeper in our relationship with God, our tongue is more apt to speak of what we feel in our emotions and in our moments when the flesh rises up in us. And as we see in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45, Luke 6, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Again, when we are still new in Christ and are still learning about what God wants for us in life, and while we are still learning about how we should conduct ourselves as children of God, what we should do and what we shouldn't do or say, as we are still growing and maturing in God. We still have to learn to deny the flesh and its emotions that want to well up within us when someone says something to us or does something to hurt us. And when we are still growing in Jesus and still learning about controlling our emotions and letting God lead us in our actions, our words, and our thoughts, it is hard to control the tongue and suppress what we are tempted by our flesh and tempted by the devil to say. And if we're not careful and we allow our flesh to speak for us in those moments, we can say something that can end up doing irreparable damage to someone that we know and love, possibly burning a bridge between us and them, making it hard for them to hear us or ever trust us again. And if we allow our tongue to just go free and unruly and we speak negativity and poison to others and about others, it can do irreparable damage to us in our spirit and soul as well. This is why we must be careful. This is why we must always be in prayer before God each and every day, praying that he will draw us closer to him and that he will help us to deny our flesh, to deny our emotions. We must always pray that God will help us to think before we act or speak, because how we react in the upcoming moments can either be great for our witnessing or be detrimental in our witnessing to others around us. And that same tongue that can tear others down can at the same time defile us and make us worse. Then in verses 7 and 8, James tells us 
that the instincts of animals can be subdued through conditioning and punishment. But the sinful nature that inspires evil words is beyond our control. Only the work of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God within us, can bring this destructive force under control. Only through the power of Holy Spirit and of God himself can we control our tongue. Verses 9 and 10. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse man, who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Here James is pointing out the inconsistency of blessing God one moment and cursing our fellow man who has been created in God's image the very next moment. Our tongue can be used for the highest calling, which is giving praise to God, singing hallelujah to God. But if we're not careful, then our tongue can be used for the lowest evil to tear down and curse others. In those who are born again, children of God, it shouldn't be said that out of their same mouth comes blessing to God and cursing to others. Our speech should always be consistently glorifying to God. We shouldn't speak one way around another and a certain uh, uh, around a certain group of people rather and then turn around and gossip and tear others down. Like the scripture says in the very next verses verses 11 and 12. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Pouring salt water into fresh water, what does that do? It only produces more salt water. Mixing bad fruit with good fruit produces a bushel of rotten fruit. Likewise, using the tongue for both blessing God and tearing others down will only produce negative results. Like a spring of water that cannot send forth both fresh and bitter water, we should not be speaking out of both sides of our mouths. We need to either be one way or be the other. And it's my prayer that we would continue to grow to be more like God and that our speech would be just like the slogan for Caleb, if you listen to Caleb on the radio, positive and encouraging Caleb. Our speech should be positive and encouraging, uplifting to others, not be used to tear others down, whether it is to their faces or behind their backs to somebody else. That is not conducive to a Christian life. If bad fruit and bitter water continue to come forth, it means there is no contradiction. There, The tree is bad and the spring is bad. Jesus teaches in Matthew 12 that a person's words are a reliable revelation of their inner character. Matthew 12, verses 34 through 37. It says, Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. In other words, your actions do show who you really are, regardless of what you say. But in the same time, in the same moment, we must also watch our tongues because we will have to answer not only for what we do, but for every word that we say as well. Verse chapter 12, uh, verse 12. Goodness. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Just as it would be completely unnatural for a fig tree to bear olives, or for an apple tree to bear oranges, it is just as unnatural for a 
Christian to live in sin and to spew poison from the same tongue that they use to praise God. And yes, gossip is poison. Lies are poison. Any negative word that comes out of your mouth is poison. Curse words is poison. They are anything negative out of our mouths is nothing but poison. Doing one thing and then saying another can ruin your credibility as a person and ruin your witness for Jesus. Can I get an amen? So we must stay in prayer to God each and every day that we that he would help us to control our tongues and use them instead to help build others up and not tear each other down. As we get ready to close, everybody remembers the phrase, Loose lips sink ships. Not controlling the tongue is what gets rumors and war started. That is why we have so many problems in the world, all because people cannot learn to control their emotions and control their tongues. If we can't learn to control our tongue, we will burn more bridges than we build, and we can find ourselves alone and discredited as a child of God. If you remember when we went through James chapter 1, then you'll know that James 1, 19 and 20 says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. This is why God gave us two ears and one mouth, so we can listen more then we talk and focus on listening more than speaking out of our mouth. Because if we let our mouth spew negativity and poison, we risk causing more damage to the people around us and to ourselves than we could ever be able to repair. Another thing to be cautious of is to always make sure and communicate clearly. Don't say anything based on your emotions at that moment. And when you do say something, think about it before you speak and then communicate clearly. Why? The devil loves to take bits and pieces of communication and twist it. And he loves to take the parts that have not been communicated and put thoughts into people's minds. He loves to fill in the blanks with his own twisted words and intentions toward everyone. If something is not communicated clearly or communicated at all, the devil can take that and run with it, making you or the other person speculate at what actually could have been meant to be said based on what was spoken or what was not spoken. So always, always be careful with what you say, and always seek to lift one another up. Your tongue is a powerful tool. It can be used to destroy, or it can be used to build lives and build relationship and strengthen the bond that you have with each other. Never participate in gossip. And if the temptation arises and someone tries to gossip to you, Excuse yourself from them so you do not expose yourself to the situation. And here's another little tidbit. Um, Sister Marsha covered that in, uh, uh, this in her youth lesson this past Tuesday night. But when uh, somebody is gossiping to you about somebody else, you can guarantee that that person is gossiping to somebody else about you. So rather than participate in that gossip, just don't participate in it at all. And if you feel your flesh and emotions welling up inside of you because of something that was said or done and it makes you angry or, and unhappy, the best thing to do is do not blow your fuse. Don't open your mouth and let poison come out. The best thing to do is to excuse yourself, go somewhere alone, pray about the situation, and then approach it after praying to God, calming down, and seeking His will. Do not tear each other down. Build each other up with your words and your speech and communicate clearly so as to take any extra ammunition away from the enemy. We all need to watch our tongues. Amen. Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that we need to watch our tongues, Lord God, and that thank you also for the reminder that we cannot do it by ourselves, Lord God, because we are made of flesh, Lord God, and we are tempted by this world each and every day to just let our words fly, let our emotions fly, not have to worry about anything we say or do. And because of that temptation, we can be tempted to just speak our mind sometimes when our emotions well up within us and just want to explode out of us. But thank you for that reminder, Lord God, that we need you to help us, Lord God, that we need Holy Spirit to work within us, Lord God, on your behalf, Lord God, that we would be able to control our tongue, to bridle our tongue, and to steer it away from negative content, from negative speech, from from the poison that we would like to spew out sometimes from our flesh, Lord God, within us. Thank you for that reminder, Lord God, that we must always stay in prayer with you each and every day, Lord God. Thank you for the reminder that we are to build others up and not tear each other down, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for loving us enough to tell us this, Lord God. And we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would just draw us closer to you, strengthen us in our walk and our relationship with you, Lord God, that no matter what, even when we get angry and we want to speak our mind, whatever we have on our mind and our tongue, that we would just clam up, Lord, and that we would just go somewhere and pray, that we would just calm down and seek your face and your will and that you would give us the words to say, Lord God, because when you give us the words to say and we speak what you have put on our hearts and minds, then we cannot go wrong. But if we try to speak our own mind of our own flesh and our own will, then we would always go wrong, Lord God. But thank you, Lord, for always being that mediator, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being the comforter and guide for us on this earth, God, that you would just, that you will help us to guide our tongue to speak nothing but positive and encouraging words, Lord God, that we would not speak poison out of the same mouth that we praise you with. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it all, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Some people say, wow, this was a hard-hitting lesson tonight, Brother Andrew. Well, when you're talking about James chapter 3 in any shape, form, or fashion, it is a hard pill to swallow sometimes because we all get in the flesh sometimes. We're not, I mean, we're human. We're not perfect. And if we're not careful, we can get in the flesh and we can speak things that could be detrimental to our relationship with others. So it is a hard pill for all of us to swallow sometimes because sometimes we just want to just let go, but we have to remain steadfast in God. Love you all, and remember that tomorrow night at 6 o'clock is Monday night prayer meeting. Get those prayer requests into us through Facebook, you know, our, our private church page if you're a member of the church, um, our public church page, Sister Marsha's prayer group pages, um, text us or call us, you know, let us know, Pastor, Sister Brenda, and myself, get those prayer requests into us. And if you have a praise report, please send that to us as well, because we would love to praise God with you for all that he is doing in your life tomorrow, Monday night, six o'clock. And then Tuesday, 6.30 is our youth lesson, our Regeneration FFCOG youth lesson, 6.30. So don't forget to tune in for that. And then Wednesday night, 6.30, is our Bible study with Pastor Little. So remember to tune in because you don't want to miss the word that God has for you on each of those nights. Love you all. Have a great week. And God bless.